it's Dominique and today I'm going to show you a very traditional Finnish craft. Um, I don't know the Finnish word for it but I will look it up for you. What it is is some thick woolly yarn and a wooden needle. These also come made out of uh, bone or metal. I haven't heard of a plastic one but Wooden ones sell for between 5 to 10 euros, depending where you shop. And this technique is from Lapland, which is the northernmost part of Finland. And I'm not very good at starting it, to be honest, but the technique is pretty much the same. You can do it in any variation of weaving your needle um, under two or under loops, over the loops, under the loops, and then returning the needle back the same direction it came from. That's all that it is. It looks very complicated, but I assure you it is not. I managed to figure it out and it's, a, it's an interesting craft and as you can see this is my first mitten. You can see the different gauge or tension as I have made mistakes and the starting bit turned out great because my neighbor did most of it for me and then it got really loose here and this marker is for my increases because it will fit my hand like this and these are so warm um, there there's virtually no way wind can get through these they're pretty snug so I'm going to try and show you as best as I can um, how to weave your needle through. So if you were starting a brand new one, you would make three loops or however many loops you want to make. And you would bring the needle up one, over two, under two, and then you would want to go back. Take your needle and go backwards. And the best way to do it is not to pull your yarn all the way through and then go backwards because your yarn will tangle. So the best way to go about it is try and show you. And this is going to be the new loop. So every time you weave your needle through and weave it back, you're going to create the new loop and work with that new one. And I strongly recommend keeping your loops very nice and big at the beginning because it is difficult um, to pull your needle through when you have um, several lengths. Um, it's all one strand of yarn, but several arm lengths, double the arms, um, pulling all the way through. So you want to make it easier on yourself. And these wooden ones are quite thick. They don't seem very thick. They're much thinner than a finger but when you're pulling through teeny tiny loops it's not fun and this kind of yarn it's very wispy it's thick but it's wispy and can fall apart so you can start with I recommend three loops this is how I was taught and just so you can see roughly what I'll be doing with the mitten you always want to keep your working yarn facing away from you because it will create that new loop as I've mentioned. So what you'll do, and I'm not going to pull the yarn through because my work is still there. This is just an example. So ignore this. Ignore your working yarn. The main focus is your needle. Up one, over two, under two, and then to go back, you don't want to go downwards. You want to go back the same direction that you came from. So turn your needle. You can pull it through a little bit so you have room to work with. And then poke your needle through the holes it came through first. So in here and in here. And don't pull all the way too tightly because you don't want to lose your new loop. So I'll try and show you as best as I can with dark yarn. 
Now, when you've already started your work, um, if you can see here, it looks like a fish bone, kind of braided, kind of a combination of the two pattern. Doesn't look like knit and pearl. And the inside looks pretty much all braided. So, what I'm doing is I'm picking up a stitch. I'm going under two. At the beginning, I only went through, I went under one because I only had three loops, but now that I have an even amount of, of stitches, I can go, I can afford to go under two. over to, I'm just going to take a regular knitting needle and point out the stitches for you. So under two, and then over two, I'm going to put my needle into this hole. and then under two more. So to find the two, you want the two that are closest together. So this is one. And the next one that is directly beside it, it might look like it's part of a braid. That's the one you want to pick up as well. So I'm under two, over two, sorry, over two, and under two. Now this is where I personally tend to pull my needle down a bit so I have some space and this is where I kind of turn my work sideways and I twist my needle to go back in without pulling my yarn all the way through or else it will tangle and that is a pain in the neck. And I use my other finger to open up the holes a bit So I'm going back under two and over these two once I get. And then pull through. And I've just made a new loop. So when you're starting, keep your loops nice and big and as you work your piece, it will tighten itself up automatically without you having to do so. As you can see in what I did in my work here, I went really loose rings here, not you know, semi-loose here, super loose here, and then it's significantly tighter here because I became more comfortable with my my actions and I was able to weave my needle in well enough that I don't have to have it super huge like when I first started like that. So now I'm comfortable enough that I can tighten it a little bit more and you can stretch out your work so that way you can see the pattern. So once again I'm just going to stretch out the other loop. So, pick up a stitch, pick up a stitch from the edge. So, under two, over two, and then under two more. And with this kind of yarn, I'm using Drops es Garden Studio Eskimo. The problem with this yarn is that it is a little fuzzy. Under two. I'm stretching out my work here so I can find where to pick my stitch better. So under two, over two, and under two. Sorry, my thumb's in the way. There we go. And then push my needle a little bit, but not all the way. 
and twist your needle and feed it back the way it came. And because I pulled my last loop too tight, I'm having some minor difficulty with twisting my needle. And there are a variety of combinations in which you can do, you know, under two, over three, under two, whichever your pattern calls for. But for me, this is what I was taught, just two, two, and two. And it seems to work for me. I'm really pushing my needle through because the previous stitch was way too tight. So be very, very careful you don't pull too tight or else your mitten or whatever you make will take much longer. Other things you can make using this pattern or this technique, which I believe is called needle binding or translated loosely to needle binding, is um, slippers, socks, hats, pretty much anything circular where you I haven't tried any flat pieces yet, but one of these days, if I get my needle through, but you get the idea, so if you have any questions, please leave a comment below and I'll try my hardest to find the answer for you. Oh dear, I think my needle's stuck, I may have to start again. Um, and just as a side note, with this kind of yarn, um, when you run out of your strand of yarn and you need to bind or attach another piece, the best way is taking a felting needle and felting the two ends together. That way it's secure. Some people split it open and braid it into the new piece. I personally can't braid tight enough that it will stick. Um, I cheated and I made a knot. A small knot and then I rubbed it together um, very hard and very quickly to kind of felt the yarn together and seal the knot and that helped but knots are not recommended because you have to pull them through so many loops. So I hope this helps a little bit and you were able to understand and when I start my second mitten I'll try to uh, make a better tutorial of the beginning. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.